Okay, welcome back everybody. Sorry it's taken me forever to get a video together. I got lazy, let's be honest, lazy. But uh, still enjoy doing the YouTube videos. I went to Tapria, which is like a Texas home inspection conference, and a bunch of people asked where the YouTube videos were. So starting it back up. The podcast I'm not sure about yet, but uh, let me show you what I found wrong. This is like a 1960s home. I've uh, been flipped recently, and I'll uh, show you some of the things we look for. One thing I noticed about this property, it is sitting a little higher, which is nice, because you're at the end of the street here, and uh, with the water, with us being a little bit higher, having a really nice graded drain here, you should have some pretty nice drainage around the structure. I got this microphone, so I hope it's working. It's really windy. But you can see that the uh, the uh, the drainage is actually pretty decent on this side of the structure, and then you have a little bit of pulling over here, which could be corrected. But we have a lot of rain, so as long as this dissipates within 24 hours, I'd say the structure is pretty good. But man, it's it's storming pretty good right now. This is the same side of the house where we had a little bit of pulling. So uh, we're gonna get the infrared camera and scan over here. And then also I notice uh, in the skylight in this location, you have a little bit of staining, a little bit of staining in this location and some bubbling around the skylight. So we're gonna make sure that we use our infrared camera to make sure that the roof is performing in this area. Rain is always good for us. A lot of people wanna try to schedule their home inspection for like the next day or something, but. Really, to be honest, I prefer to be here during the rain because uh, it's hard to it's hard to hide, hide that kind of stuff because the infrared camera just pulls it right out of the wall, shows us big bright blue colors. Here's something else that I noticed on the structure underneath the sinks and the uh, the toilets. Here we have uh, old old galvanized water lines here, so it's something that we really want to keep an eye out on or see check our pressure levels and to see if we can see anything in the attic. Galvanized water lines are an older system and Houston's water is so hard and heavy it ate up a lot of our, our galvanized water lines. So uh, they, they only really lasted about 50 years. And if this is a 1960s home, they're, it's way past its lifespan. So we'll all, we're obviously gonna let the homeowner know, but our main goal is to try to help them find some leaks on the property. Okay, I hope you can see this. Uh, it's lightning and stuff outside, but, and thundering. But we have a lot of different roof covering here. We got flat roof, metal roof. Looks like they have some shingles here through the, the window. And uh, we have several transitions. These type of roof structures, they're very prone to water leaks. And uh, we're gonna have to use our infrared camera to see if we can catch anything. Check this out. Before I head up to the attic, I noticed out this noticed this out the window. Check this out. So that's the uh, secondary or the primary drain line for the AC, and it does a ramp. It's, these uh, AC lines work on gravity, so that definitely won't work. But something to really pay attention to, you can see there's a lot of bubbling in this uh, flat roof here, and sometimes that means that water is making it underneath that roof structure causing the wood to swell and uh, get water underneath there. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna find something uh, with the infrared camera when we scan here in a little bit. So I'm staying out of James's way. He got the infrared camera and he noticed there was some water stains up here in the attic space. Oh, what a foul. All right, here we go. And uh, you can see we have some old water stains here, but they replaced some of the decking. So we just, we're gonna double check, scan around. Got a little bit of color, but it's not significant. You got some old wood shingles over there. No. Nothing? Nothing. You want? I can go grab it real quick. So uh, James asked me to grab the moisture meter because uh, the blue color shows up because it's cold outside too. So uh, the moisture meter will really give us a definitive answer. Is it water or not coming through 
that decking over there. Here we go. Oh yeah, you have a bunch of stains over here. Oh, that's that's got to be active. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we gotta go with a little stabby stabby action. It's dry. What about in the white over there? Oh, it's on my side, closer to the beam. Old. Old. Wow. Eleven. You got some over your head over here too as well. Nothing. And you got a little bit right here too. Watch your step, yeah. But that didn't show up any colors at all, though, on the no. thermal. So they just didn't replace the decking, huh? Yeah, all right. Wow. I, uh, see, this is why it's always important to have additional tools, I guess, because we would have definitely written that up as active. All right. It is a old one ten. All right. All right, James. Notice this. This there's a whirly bird up there, and uh, they box it in so there's no ventilation up here, and they just add decking underneath it, and you can see the the active water drip right there. That's crazy. The thermal really didn't show that up very well, did it? Oh, we didn't get look over here. Oh yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Hard to tell. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it actually. You know, it's funny. It looks better in this camera shot than it does. Oh yeah. There, I don't know why the color, oh, like, the how the camera interprets the color, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a definite water leak. I wonder if it will show up really well in that bathroom underneath there. Yeah, if it's been leaking long enough. Those are a lot darker over there. I'd be, I wouldn't walk across that. Though. I mean, we got enough. We got a water leak right there. That's that's enough. So while we're in here, it started raining even harder, and uh, we started actually to the left. We always normally scan from the right, but for whatever reason, we went left this time and um, hit all those spots, didn't really find much. And then he, when he was on the roof earlier, he noticed that there was like a, um, a turbine up there and it was like kind of canted and half off. Sorry, he turned off the lights just to see if uh, you can see anything. No, you're good. Um, and he was looking for it and then it's in this exact spot and that's where we found the water leak. And then there's a bunch more stains over here, but there's a lot of stuff in the way. Let me show it to you. No, but you have all these old ducts and insulation covering the decking and stuff. And as a home inspector, you don't, once we found out the roof is leaking, you already need a roofer. So there's no reason to risk damaging the property more to see if we can find additional water leaks. You're like, hey, we found the water leak in this spot. How'd you find some? On the sidewall? Yeah. Oh, it's leaking around the chimney? Water's, water's oh, I see it. Yeah. I'll get a video of it. Hold on. Um, yeah, so there's no reason to risk damage in the property. Sorry, let me show you what he found. He, he was looking at the chimney and just staring at it, and he found uh, another water leak. Another yeah, no, I got it. I got it right there. Yep. Yeah. Red cooler over there earlier. It's, yeah, it's just oh, like yeah. a cold air. So it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. See? Yeah. 
Another thing too, you can tell from like an experienced home inspector and then someone that um, has not doing it a whole lot is you can see that James found some stuff, but he didn't like, oh, I found it and ran out of the attic space. He just sat still, spent a little bit of time and just kept looking around while I uh, ran my mouth in the corner over here. And then he found another water leak around the chimney because he just knew that was a problematic area. And also, it reaffirms the reason why it's good to inspect in the rain. And I guess uh, it shows you that the tools aren't always as great as sometimes just using your brain. All right, uh, let's see what else we find. Welcome to Houston, the place where it likes to flood. <laughs> I think we might need to get out of here soon. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, uh, one more find. Uh, right here, whenever we were going through the panel, uh, James had it open and the breaker was tripped. So he tripped this one and it popped this one. So we're just going to recommend for an electrician. And that's the reason why the lights were out upstairs. Another thing that you'll see in a lot of these renovated properties, especially these older ones, is that there is a block. If you see these square marks, that means that we've had previous foundation work. Let's see if there's another one in here somewhere. Sometimes they cover them up when they paint. Um, I'm not seeing it. Maybe in this closet over here. Well, maybe the work was limited. So if you had previous uh, foundation work on a property and you see that, see if you can try to get a hold of the old work orders. Oh, there was two of them right next to each other. What am I looking at? Look at this. There's one right there. And there's maybe one right there. No, look, and right there. <laughs> I was blind. I was looking at the screen. So they must have had issues on this side of the property. Back to what I was saying was, is uh, if you've had previous foundation work or you notice the property's had previous foundation work, that obviously looks a lot older. But sometimes they come with some sort of warranty involved, like a 10-year warranty. And um, that can help give you value on the property, showing you that work has been done and it brought the property up to par. So um, you know, all homes eventually sometimes will have some sort of work, but it doesn't mean that your foundation's bad. What I would look for if your foundation is bad is like if they've done work and then and there was still more work was done and then they came back and did more work then that means that the soil in your area is really volatile so uh, if they did this work and it was done a long time ago and the property never moved again i'd say you're in pretty good shape uh, moving forward and not really expecting much on on this house there we go Let's see if we see anything temperature is pretty consistent yeah Anomalies. Anomalies. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That that's pretty that's pretty thick, but it also it's square, so yeah. It so could be cold air. We'll hit it, we'll test it. So even though we hit it with the infrared camera, he's probably hitting a little metal there. Still a good idea to hit it with a moisture meter just in case. Yeah. And that's where all this cold air slash maybe water was coming through, but as you can see, it's dry. It's dry. The moisture meter. So there you go, inspectors out there. Stop relying 100% on your infrared camera. You got to follow up those readings with the moisture meter test to. Make sure it's accurate or not. One other thing we like to do in a property is uh, we'll zip level it, especially these older ones. Whenever they've been, whenever they have been patched and painted and everything looks clean, it can hide some defects of us noticing any type of foundation movement. You can see they did retrimmed all the windows. Everything looks real nice and clean and straight. You have a new fireplace, so. They could hide a lot of those defects that would show up being foundation issues. So 
what he's doing is just zip leveling it. This room looked like we felt like it was a little bowed and uh, the window couldn't open too much. So uh, what do you got over there? So up or down? So just a little less than an inch, less than an inch drop over, what would that be, 20 feet? 25, four feet maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So that's nothing. And then we're going to test it over there. So it is a little bit of a bow. So you're up. You're up. 0.3 of a drop? Okay, yeah. So 0.3, then it probably comes up a little bit and then drops a little bit over here, which is nothing. You're going to get something like that on a on an older property. All our structures move. It's always good to double check because sometimes they'll be like, this room's fine. And then we shoot it and then we notice that the whole house is like tilted or something. And we just let the client know that the home has shifted a lot. Um, when it comes to saying, should you buy this property or not? That's not something a home inspector would do. We always will just give you the facts and you have to determine if this property meets your tolerances uh, of fixing the things that are important to you. Some people are 100% okay with galvanized water lines and a leaky roof. It has to be up to you if you wanna purchase this house. Moving forward with this property, if the buyers decide to move forward, one of the, you found something? Oh, um, if, you, if they're moving forward, the, there's a few big ticket items that they're going to have to address. Roof, we already know it's leaking. I didn't really need to get much out there. <laughs> see, see, see that, <laughs> look, I think it's about time to go. <laughs> Are they, are are they under the water? Are the base under the water? I'm up to my. Time. Yeah, we need to go. Yeah, so all right, we're it's time to go. But the biggest thing is they need the roof done. They need uh, know that they have galvanized water lines in the home, and it's going to take time to um, in a matter of time before the plumbing starts leaking. And they need an electrician too. So. Uh, they have had previous foundation work, but I wouldn't say it's terrible. But um, yeah, obviously it's time for us to go. We'll finish this report. Normally finish the report on site, but we're going to finish this one at home. Um, client's not present. So. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, catch us on the next one. See ya. Bye.